We introduced time series decomposition back in chapter 3. Now we're going to combine those ideas with the ideas of forecasting to create forecasting with decomposition. So you remember we, in chapter 3 when we talked about time series decomposition we split a series into three components. A trend, a seasonal component and a remainder component. We're not going to use all three components here. We're just going to use the seasonal component and then everything else, which is the seasonally adjusted component. So we can write it like this. The original data is equal to a seasonal component S and a seasonally adjusted component A. And the idea is we're going to forecast S and A and then add the forecast together to get a forecast for Y. We're going to forecast S using a seasonal naive method. That makes good sense because the seasonal component doesn't change much over time and so the forecasts for the next year should be pretty similar to what we've seen this year. And then the seasonally adjusted component, we can use any non-seasonal time series method for that. So far we've seen a few methods. We've got the mean method, the naive method and the drift method and in later chapters we'll have a whole lot of other options for forecasting A. We add the two forecasts together and we get the forecast for Y. Let's look at an example. We'll take here uh, US employment data and we will uh, just pull out data since 1990 and only data on retail trade. Uh, and so the resulting object looks like this. 357 rows of data on a single time series which is total number of people employed in retail trade in the US every month since January 1990. Um, oops, too far. So uh, first of all, we'll do an STL decomposition, exactly the same tools you've seen before. We take the data, we use the model function and model the employed series using STL, and then we estimate all the components. Uh, we don't no longer need the dot model column, so I'll get rid of it. And we see here that we've got the original data in the first two columns here. And then we've got these new columns uh, over here uh, trend, season, year, remainder and season adjust. We're just going to look at season, year and season adjust. These two things together add up to the original data here. So we're going to forecast season, year, forecast, season, adjust and then add the forecast together. Let's have a look at season adjust, the adjusted data. And uh, you can see in the time plot below that it's uh, sort of wanders around a little bit like a random walk. And so a good model for that might be a naive model. So we take the decomposition and we uh, pipe that into the model function using naive to model season underscore adjust. And then we can forecast and we'll get forecasts that look like this with a point forecast is equal to the most recent observed value of the seasonally adjusted data um, with some prediction intervals around it. The seasonal component will forecast using seasonal naive and then we add the two things together. Now, a simple way to do this is to do it all in one step rather than like what's shown on the screen now where we separately forecast season adjust and then I'll have to do another forecast of seasonal naive and then I have to add them together. If we do it in one step it looks like this. So we take the original data set um, before we did anything to it. Uh, we pipe that into model and then I'm going to use a new function here which is the decomposition model function. And inside that function we have firstly what decomposition we're going to use. So we're going to use an STL of the employed series and I'm choosing to have a relatively small time trend window here and to make it robust. And then the second argument is how you deal with the seasonally adjusted data, that one. And so I'm going to use a naive method for that. And the third argument, which is not shown here, is how do you forecast the season, the season year component here. By default that's always S naive. So if you leave it out, as I have done in this example, you will just use seasonal naive for the seasonal component. And since that's almost always what you want to do, we rarely put in the third argument. Once you've done set up the model like this, you can then pipe it into forecast. And when you do that, it's doing the forecasts of the seasonally adjusted series and of the seasonal component and it puts them together. So you don't actually have to do that yourself. 
uh, and when we look at the plot you see it actually looks pretty good uh, the last observed values here and so because we've used a naive on the seasonally adjusted data the um, it's, it's pretty much picked up what it looks like towards the end of the series and, and push that forward. Um, the seasonal pattern at the end has also been replicated in the first few uh, forecasts. Okay, so just to summarize, a decomposition model, the function decomposition model, creates uh, a model which includes both the decomposition and a model for the seasonally adjusted series and a model for the seasonal component. You have to provide a method for how to forecast a season adjusted series. There's no default for that. But if you don't provide a method for forecasting the seasonal component, it will use seasonal naive. Um, when it comes to producing the forecast intervals, the prediction intervals around your forecast, it's using the variances from both of those models and adding them together to get the, the prediction intervals for the original series.